So we need to open up uh, an existing file. So I'll go to file and then choose open and then back to the working folder. I'll open up a file called trio and then choose open. Again, we saw this earlier, and this is something that Illustrator will do sometimes. Uh, if you move a folder of files and Illustrator documents included from one computer to another, it will sometimes forget where the links are. And what it's talking about in this specific scenario is there's another one of my fabulous pencil sketches that's uh, that's just been uh, lost in terms of the link to it. So again, I would always choose replace and then Click on the menu at the top and we'll head back up to the main project folder into the info folder. And then I'll choose from here, scan trio, which is just a JPEG file and then click on replace. And the file will then finish loading up. And we're going to try and start as simply as we possibly can with a pen tool. It's a, it's a tricky tool to get used to. So we're going to recreate the tent symbol on the left hand side of this artboard. We're going to try and match the pencil sketch as close as we can. And to do that, I'm going to pick up my zoom tool and zoom into that region and get a nice clear view of it. And then I'm going to switch to my pen tool, which is the fifth tool down in the tools panel. And you can also reach that by tapping the P key on the keyboard. Once that's active, I will then go over to the properties panel on the far right hand side of the screen and change the fill color from whatever it is to none. Because when you're trying to trace or copy something, if you have a fill color assigned, that fill color will just hide the thing that you're trying to trying to copy or trace from. So always with the pen tool, set the fill to none. And then in terms of the stroke, well, as long as the color of the stroke um, is contrasting to whatever's behind it, then that's a good starting point. And the stroke weight of one point is also a good thickness to start with as well. And the reason why we have a stroke appearance is it helps to, for you to visualize how accurate the thing is that you're drawing on screen. Final step then is to go up to the view menu and then just make sure that there is a tick adjacent to smart guides because they are going to be very handy in this instance. So if there's a tick adjacent to them, they're turned on. I'm going to come back out of that menu and click on the word view to make it disappear. Then it's all about where do you start? So I'm going to start at the very top here in the middle of the V. Notice that my pen tool symbol appears from my cursor now, and it does work from where the end of where you'd expect the ink to come out of the uh, pen. But also there is an asterisk adjacent to the pen tool. So you'll, you'll find that those symbols do change from time to time. So in this instance, the pen tool is telling us that we're about to draw a brand new path that's unrelated to anything else in this document. And from here, I will simply left click and let go of the mouse. I'm not dragging anything. I'm not holding anything down the keyboard that will create a single anchor point. And that's our starting place. I'm then going to hover my cursor where the next corner is. So all that we're doing here is we're creating a path. And every time it changes direction, we need another anchor point. So just up here, hover over that region. And again, without anything held down on the keyboard, left click and let go of the mouse. And that creates the second anchor point. So we now have a segment and that black stroke. And I'll keep working around in a clockwise fashion. So you notice over here now that smart guides kick in when my cursor's you know, close to being uh, level with the previous anchor point, horizontally speaking. And then it will try and just snap it in place for us to create a perfectly horizontal line. If I left click again here, it adds the third anchor point. And that's the process that will follow going all the way around this uh, tent symbol here to create it. So again, not holding anything down, hover to where the next change in direction is, left click and let go, hover across to the next place where the path changes direction, left click and let go. And again, over here, you might just have to be a little bit patient with it. You might not see any, any kind of smart guide colors appear on screen, but you might notice that there is a slight leap with a pen tool where it just latches on and snaps perfectly horizontally. If you're not sure, you can always hold down the shift key and that will guarantee that you lock that line to be perfectly horizontal. And with the shift key held down, you can shift and left click to, and then let go of the mouse, then let go of the shift key. And I'll continue working around in clockwise fashion, going to here and then I'll left click and let go. I'll then hover up towards the top and now it will notice there are other anchor points there. So that's nice because I know that the very top of this shape now will be perfectly level. I'll left click here, hover across, left click here, 
and then finally head back to the original anchor point that we started with. And this is where we see a different symbol adjacent to the pen tool. It's a ring. So that tells us that we're about to complete the shape and that your mouse is in the right place to left click one last time and finish off the object. So that creates a closed object. Also notice that now the pen tool, its only purpose in life is to draw. So it now is showing us the same symbol again for the asterisk, knowing that if we click in this region of the document, we're going to create a second shape completely unrelated to the one that we've just made. And that's how we create a path all made of what are called corner points, which creates straight lines of a path.